As I have stated earlier, the bargaining agent must be certified as bargaining agent. How? How can a union be certified as bargaining agent? Well, there are two modes. First is SEBA certification. SEBA means sole and exclusive bargaining agent. So we have SEBA certification and the second is certification election. SEBA certification is proper only when there is no other legitimate labor organization within the bargaining unit, huh? within the bargaining unit sought to be represented by the union. If there are two or more legitimate labor organizations within the bargaining unit, the proper course of action is certification election. So how do we obtain a SEBA certification? Well, the union should file a request with the Department of Labor, the regional office that issued its certificate of registration. Then if a SEBA certification is issued, the SEBA certification must be posted for 15 consecutive days in two most conspicuous places in the establishment. So what would be the effect if a SEBA certification is issued? Well, first, the union becomes the certified bargaining agent of the employees covered by the bargaining unit. Secondly, filing of a petition for certification election is barred for a period of one year from the issuance of the SEBA certification. This is what we call the SEBA certification year bar rule, which says that no petition for certification election shall be filed or entertained within one year from the date of issuance of the SEBA certification. Now, the second mode of being certified as bargaining agent is through certification election. Certification election is just the process of determining through secret ballot the sole and exclusive bargaining agent of employees in an appropriate bargaining unit. Petitions for certification election are handled by med arbiters. So what is the scope of the authority of the med arbiter in a certification proceeding? Well, the authority of the med arbiter is limited to determining whether the petition for certification election should be granted or not. That is why the med arbiter can resolve issues pertaining to existence or non-existence of employer-employee relationship or eligibility for union membership. But the med arbiter cannot resolve issues pertaining to validity of the registration of the union except when the union is not registered in the roster of legitimate labor organization. The med arbiter also cannot rule on the validity of the registration of a CBA except when the CBA is not registered in the registry of CBAs. These questions are cognizable by the regional director in an independent petition for cancellation of registration. What is the legal standing of an employer in a certification proceeding? Well, in a certification proceeding, the employer is generally considered as a mere bystander because certification election is the sole concern of workers. The role of the employer is generally limited to being notified of the proceedings and submitting the list of employees during the pre-election conference. But the bystander principle admits of certain exception. That means that despite the bystander principle, there are certain exceptional situations where an employer can validly oppose a petition for certification election to help the med arbiter in resolving the petition. First of which is lack of employer-employee relationship. An employer can validly oppose a petition for certification election when the relationship of employer-employee does not exist between the company and employees sought to be represented by the petitioning union. The reason for this is because the duty to bargain arises only between an employer and its employees. So, when neither party is an employer or an employee of the other, no such duty exists. And when there is no such duty to bargain, it would be pointless to hold a certification election. Secondly, an employer can validly oppose a petition for certification election when the petitioning union is not a legitimate labor organization, either because it is not listed in the registry of legitimate labor unions or because its registration has been cancelled with finality. The reason for this is because an unregistered union cannot be certified as bargaining agent and therefore it would be futile to hold a certification election. 
Also, an employer can validly oppose a petition for certification election if the petition is not supported by the written consent of 25% of the employees in the bargaining unit. This refers only to organized establishments. So in organized establishments, an employer can validly oppose a petition for certification election when the petition is not supported by the written consent of 25% of the employees. The reason is because the absence of 25% consent is an indication that the petitioning union does not represent a group of employees who have substantial interest in the certification election. Next is the election year bar and certification year bar. An employer can validly oppose a petition for certification election when the petition was filed within one year from a valid certification election or from certification as bargaining agent. The reason for this is so as not to disrupt the bargaining process. Also, an employer can validly oppose a petition for certification election when there is a duly registered CBA or when there is a bargaining deadlock that has been submitted to conciliation, arbitration, or is the subject of a notice of strike or lockout. An employer can also oppose a petition for certification election when the bargaining unit sought to be represented by the petitioning union is not an appropriate bargaining unit. Because a union that represents an inappropriate bargaining unit cannot be certified as bargaining agent. So it would be pointless to hold a certification election. The case of Dunlop versus Secretary of Labor is a case in point. In this case, the union filed a petition for certification election among the supervisory employees of Dunlop. Now, Dunlop filed a motion to dismiss on the ground that the union is a mixture of supervisory and rank and file employees, considering that it is composed of 27 supervisors, 26 office personnel, 6 managerial employees, and 1 confidential employee. So Dunlop theorized that it cannot act as bargaining agent for the proposed bargaining unit. So the issue here is, can the union validly file a petition for certification election to represent the supervisory employees of Dunlop? The Supreme Court ruled that the union cannot validly file a petition for certification election for the supervisory employees because the organization itself is defective considering that it is composed of a mixture of supervisors, managerial, and rank and file employees. The infirmity cannot be remedied by simply deleting the rank and file employees from the list of membership. So, under the circumstances, the union in Dunlop has no legal right to file a petition for certification election to represent the bargaining unit composed of supervisors for so long as it counts rank and file and managerial employees from among its members. Then we have the case of Philippine Phosphate. Philippine Phosphate is a union of supervisory employees. Its membership consists of 125 uh, supervisors, 271 professional and technical employees. So, the union filed a petition for certification election among the supervisory employees of uh, the company. Philippine Phosphate did not oppose the petition, but it objected to the inclusion of 271 rank-and-file employees. The issue here is, should the petition for certification election be granted? Now, what was the ruling of the Supreme Court? Supreme Court ruled that the petition should be granted, but the 271 rank-and-file employees should be excluded because they cannot validly join the union which is composed of supervisors. Remember that the union is supposed to be a union of 125 supervisors. Now, if the 271 rank-and-file employees are not excluded, the union will turn out to be a rank-and-file union because the rank-and-file outnumber the supervisors. So, how do we reconcile the seeming contradiction between the Philippine Phosphate case and the Dunlop case? In the Philippine Phosphate case, the petition for certification election was granted because it was not opposed. The validity of the organization was not challenged. Philippine Phosphate merely objected to the inclusion of non-supervisory employees in the bargaining unit. But in the Dunlop case, the petition for certification election was dismissed because it was opposed on the ground that the bargaining unit sought to be represented is not an appropriate bargaining unit. 
the validity of the organization was challenged for being a mixture of rank and file and supervisory employees. This brings us to the question of when can a petition for certification election be filed? Now, to answer that, determine whether the establishment is organized or unorganized. In unorganized establishment, the petition can be filed anytime. So, when we say unorganized establishment, it is a company where there is no certified bargaining agent or a specific bargaining unit. On the other hand, in organized establishment, the petition can only be filed during the freedom period. Now, when we say organized establishment, it means that there is a certified bargaining agent or a particular bargaining unit. There are situations where a petition for certification election cannot be filed. First of which is within one year from holding of a valid certification election or certification as bargaining agent. Secondly, when the CBA negotiations resulted in a deadlock that has been submitted to conciliation, arbitration, or is the subject of a notice of strike or lockout. And the third situation is when there is a duly registered CBA. Who can file a petition for certification election? Well, a petition for certification election can be filed by an independent union or by a local chapter that has been issued a charter certificate by a federation or a petition for certification election can also be filed by a federation or national union on behalf of its local chapter whom it has issued a charter certificate. A petition for certification election can also be filed by an employer but only when it is requested to bargain collectively. So, an employer can file a petition for certification election when requested to bargain collectively. When an employer files a petition for certification election, it is not necessary for it to support the petition with their written consent of 25% of the employees within the bargaining unit. After the filing of the petition, the employer reverts to its status as bystander. Regarding petitions in organized establishment, all that is required is a verified petition. The 25% consent is not necessary. But in organized establishments, the petition can be filed only during the freedom period. And the petition must be verified and supported by the written consent of 25% of the employees in the bargaining unit. The 25% is needed to show that the petitioning union represents a group of employees who have substantial interest in the election. But this 25% consent need not be established with mathematical precision. Substantial compliance will suffice. So what is the significance of the 25% consent? First, if the petition is supported by the written consent of 25% of the employees within the bargaining unit, it is mandatory on the part of the med arbiter to order an election. But if the written consent falls short of the 25% statutory requirement, it is no longer mandatory but discretionary on the part of the med arbiter to call for a certification election, which means that the med arbiter may or may not order a certification election. But if the petition is totally unsupported by 25% written consent, the petition should be dismissed. Now suppose the employees withdrew their consent. What would be the effect? Well, determine when the withdrawal was done. If the withdrawal was done before the filing of the petition, then the med arbiter may not order the holding of a certification election because in effect, the petition lacks the required consent. But if the withdrawal of the consent was made after the filing of the petition, the med arbiter can still order a certification election to dispel any doubt as to the voluntariness of the withdrawal. Can certification election orders be appealed? To answer that, determine the nature of the establishment. In unorganized establishment, uh, an order granting the petition is not appealable. Any issue arising therefrom may be raised as a protest. But if the order or decision dismisses the petition, then the aggrieved party can appeal to the Secretary of Labor within 10 days from receipt. On the other hand, in organized establishment, an order granting or dismissing the petition is appealable to the Secretary of Labor within 10 days from receipt. If the certification election order becomes final, an executory med arbiter will uh, set the date of election. 
there must be a notice of election. This is a mandatory requirement which cannot be waived. The notice of election must be posted at least 10 days before the actual date of election. Where should it be posted? In two most conspicuous places in the company premises. Again, this is a mandatory requirement which cannot be waived by the parties. During the election, a vote may be challenged. If this happens, the challenge ballot will be placed in an envelope, sealed in the presence of the parties, and indicate the name of the party challenging, and the sealed envelope must be signed by the representatives of the parties. These sealed envelopes will be opened only when the number of segregated voters will materially alter the result of the election. Sometimes, protests may be lodged by a party. If that happens, the protest must be recorded in the minutes of the election proceedings. A protest not so raised are deemed waived. And the protest must be formalized within five days after the close of the election proceedings. If not formalized, the protest shall be deemed dropped. When we say after the close of the election proceedings, this refers to the period from closing of the polls to counting and tabulation of votes. Now suppose the election resulted in a tie. What would be the course of action? Well, the course of action is to conduct a rerun election. Rerun election. The rerun election will be conducted within 10 days from posting of the notice of rerun election. Next is runoff election. What is a runoff uh, election? A runoff election is a voting conducted when in a certification election with at least three choices. None of the choices obtained a majority of the valid votes cast. And the total number of votes for all the contending unions is at least 50% of the total number of votes cast without challenge ballots, which can alter the results. Who can participate in a runoff election? The answer is only the two unions receiving the highest number of votes can participate. The no union choice will no longer be a participant in a runoff election. So if the second highest number of votes is a tie between two or more unions, the tie should first be broken through a rerun election. Failure of election. There is failure of election when majority of the eligible voters were not able to vote. Now what would be the course of action in case of failure of election? The petitioner can file a motion for immediate holding of another election within six months from declaration of failure of election. Now, if there is failure of election, there is valid election. What is a valid election? The election is valid when majority of the eligible voters were able to vote. And what is the effect of a valid election? A valid election will bar any union from filing a petition for certification election within one year from holding of the election. This is what we call the election year bar rule, which says that no petition for certification election can be filed or entertained within one year from the holding of a valid certification election. The case of our transport Corp is illustrating. In this case, the union filed a petition for certification election. The med arbiter dismissed the petition because of certain defects. Now, the union rectified its mistake by filing a second petition for certification election. The company moved for the dismissal of the second petition on the ground that it was filed within one year from the dismissal of the petition. So the issue here is whether the union was barred from filing the second petition for certification election. And what was the ruling of the Supreme Court? The Supreme Court ruled that the union was not barred from filing the second petition because the one-year prohibition imposed by the election year bar rule will not apply since no certification election was conducted. The first petition was merely dismissed because of certain defects. The election year bar rule will apply only when there was actual election. 
Next is certification as bargaining agent. The med arbiter will certify the winning union as the collective bargaining agent if no protest was filed within the five-day period from the close of the election proceedings and no challenge or eligibility issue was raised. Or if one was raised, it will not materially alter the result. Now, so what is the legal effect of certification as bargaining agent? Well, certification qualifies the union to act as the bargaining agent. Second effect is that it will bar any union from filing a petition for certification election within one year from certification. This is what we call the certification year or negotiation year bar rule, which says that no petition for certification election can be filed or entertained within one year from certification as bargaining agent. The one-year period is reckoned not necessarily from the date of election, but from the date of proclamation or certification as bargaining agent. And what is the significance of the one-year period? The one-year period is the time allotted to the certified bargaining agent to initiate the bargaining negotiations. This is exemplified by the case of Campil versus Trajano. In this case, Union Number 1 was certified as bargaining agent of all rank-and-file employees. Four years had lapsed without any bargaining negotiations between the company and Union Number 1. So Union Number 2 filed a petition for certification election. The question is, will the petition filed by Union Number 2 prosper? The answer is yes. The Supreme Court ruled that the petition for certification election will prosper because the one-year period during which the certified union is required to initiate the bargaining negotiations has expired.